that were just as bad. So there, CNN this weekend is trying to get him removed completely from YouTube. And if he goes, we all go. You know? Yeah, they go after the first, you know, the mop. Everyone else is mopping up because he's got some muscle and money and, and a lot of people behind him. And so that's what the things I said about Alex is Alex mm-hmm. has a personality that allowed him to push through and get out over, uh, through the, the, the granite ceiling of media. And that personality, which was able to, you know, it's like a warrior fighting a war and coming home in peace. Sometimes Alex is his own worst enemy sometimes and how he goes off and stuff and all that. But again, what do you, when you I have love a warrior? I, and, I, I love it. It was just the QAnon thing. That was the, yeah. the thing with me. So he, um, Here's one thing I, before this broadcast, so I'd be ready because I was up really early. I was up, I don't know when I'm not up, <laughs> but I, uh, I took uh, two Brain Force, the Brain Force uh, product that uh, InfoWars has that Alex developed. And it's terrific. I mean, look, I feel like like I do in the morning right now. I can, and that I took it about, well, about an hour ago. And, of course, I had a couple cup, cups of espresso and things like that. And, you know, I took a, some, some EFA oils, too, which also helps. But uh, boom, focus. So there's a product that really, uh, you know, that really works. And they're mocking him for the product. The products are terrific. No, the, I, I have brain force, and I use the uh, knockout, which uh, helped me. Sleep. I've got. I need to use it. I need to use it. I, I have it by things. my bed, and I don't use it. I would just so, bring. I would just bring it up in the fact that uh, because of what's happening, not only what. Trump being Trump being elected was the big shock to them. Like what? And mm-hmm. Alex and all of us, if you will, uh, did our parts or whatever. And the people who elected Trump, well, they all got to stop that. I mean, it's it's when when, when the, some of the Republicans are looking at like left and right Democrats. Well, you know, we give some, they give some. No, no, this is to the death. This is if they lose, they you know they're exposed as child. Pornography, drinking blood, all that stuff, right? So they're they're in it until death. They'll, if it comes down to it, if it comes down to them actually losing, they'll go into the bunkers, and all of a sudden we have a nuclear war. I mean, that's the kind of stakes that are here. I mean, I don't yeah. think people get that. Yeah. Thank you, James. I mean, that you you nailed it right there. That that is uh, absolutely what we're up against, and that's why. Hey, we're all brothers and sisters who b- want freedom, right? We're all we. You know what all this is teaching me is teaching me that uh, when we've had all these divisions, and I've participated, too, in my share of mudslinging, so, and I've had it slung on me, but now we don't need any more of the mudslinging. We need all the hands on deck. Yeah. Don't you think? I mean, we need everybody to be aware, and um, we, we don't need, you know, I don't need QAnon or any other of these gimmicks to tell me what's going on. I know what's going on. It's bad, and we need to get unified. That's that's all I can tell you. We, we're in the bunker, and we need to you know, stop arguing about religion and everything else. We need to just get together and say, look, we're fighting for our survival now. This is different than just you know, arguing over you know, what kind of religion we should have or what kind of, you know, we, we are now uh, faced with uh, fighting for our freedom versus them wanting to lock the whole thing down or even end it for everybody if they don't get their way. This is very serious stakes, and that's why I'm not popping the champagne right now. And I'm not saying, hey, we got it now. Uh, Trump behind the scenes is taking care of it. You know, you, people that have been fooled by QAnon that you've come out of it now, you ought to be just damned angry that you he, he just hijacked your consciousness for like months on end, and, and, and he's weakened you to the point where you're not able to— uh, you know, to 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 understand that that, that we we all have a we all have to get together and 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 slay this hydra. You know, and it is it is a seven headed hydra. We gotta we gotta fight it, and uh, and it's not taken care of, and the bad guys are not arrested, and you know the it's it's not a done deal, and and you know to the evangelical church too that they feel, well, Trump's in there. I mean, not all of them, but a lot of them, Trump's in there. God's not going to take back what he started, and so we don't have to worry about that. No, we have to stay vigilant and not make up our minds that there's clear sailing, but just keep on like we were doing, you know, step by step by step, uh, putting forth the principles, people getting to be activists out there, getting on the— Airwaves, of course, now today, that's going to be a lot harder to say what you what's on your heart and what you mean, because 
look, they're taking the extreme position this weekend of total, uh, you know, Chinese USSR style, you know, Soviet style censorship. Yeah. I mean, this is just insane. Insane. People, insane. people should go look and read about the uh, Maoist, the Cultural Revolution in the in the fifties, sixties, mm-hmm. and also the Bolsheviks in the. Uh, now the Bolsheviks were the majority, hence the name. Mensheviks were the minority, and so they had a lot more uh, people to work with. But the whole goal was to tear down the culture and destroy the country from within and take power. And look what happened in both cases, right? This is we're having the American style Bolshevik Maoist cultural revolution. That's what's happening now, and, right. and we can look read from the history and say this is what's happening, and we need to say no. And, that's and why, that, you know, those, I, those kids, those kids are a perfect example of being indoctrinated and recruited, because that's all the left really has, uh, to bring about this cultural revolution, this kind of Chinese, you know, Red Guard type of uh, of thing, where they, these were kids that were worshipped in China, killing their parents. You know, that's what that's what there was like fifty million people killed, but, but you know, by by this. By the by, the children. I mean, you know, I look it up. Look up the Black Book of Communism. You'll see it. You know, I'm I'm even understating it. You know, it's it's. Uh, there you go. All right, folks, take a good look at that. Yeah, China established gun control in 1935, and from 1948 to 52, 20 million political dissidents, unable to defend themselves, were rounded up and executed. Yep. And and people say, well, no, that's not going to happen here. And go go throughout. I read a, a series of books. I don't have James, any, one uh, more time. 20 million, 20 million political dissidents. Okay, just to get the number in there. 20 million. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> look look just, at the background so in this picture. Yeah. You could see the throngs of people who are just waiting their turn. And, uh, you know, I, I read the history of the world. Uh, actually, it was an audio book. I, uh, when I drive, I listen to uh, books and, uh, they started out like the beginning of recorded history, and they moved all the way up to, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember. I think it was World, before World War One. I, I think it was, or maybe it was. But one thing I noticed is from the beginning of history, all history is a recording of who was in charge and who knocked them out and who took over and who took over and who took over. And that's what all history is. And you have the good king. I was reading about this in this particular one. It was in China. This one king wrought a lot of prosperity, did all this stuff. His son gets in, in charge. He immediately kills all his siblings to stop any qualms about who he has the throne. Now, how does a good king have kids? Mm-hmm. The first thing they do is kill all the rest of their own brothers and sisters. You know, and this is what it is. It's all a vapor here. We could be gone like that. And to think that, oh, it could never happen today, that just gives me chills on my spine. That's a good good word, my friend. Good word. That that's yeah. Listen to James. He's he's got it. He listen to us. He listen to you know anyone who values life, freedom, family, um, children. It's hard to believe that in this day and age we're actually living in an age where we are uh, somehow signed on to murdering uh, babies that could live outside the womb as one of the preferred ways of having an abortion is to wait. It's, 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 it's hard to believe we are. It's hard to, for me to believe God's even going to put up with this much longer in this country. But here's the word that I received. Okay, months ago, and I've shared this with our listeners, and I'll share it with, with yours. Um, there's enough good praying people here, God-fearing people here. It's not exactly like Sodom and Gomorrah where everybody but three, four, five, six people were you know, we're um, um, over on the other side. There's a there's a really strong remnant here, and it's a young country as well. And we know the heart of this remnant is to overturn all this stuff. You, know, we want that, and God knows that. And so He's leading us as a people. And I and I believe the Elijah prophecy in 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 uh, was it um, Micah? Where where was that, James? The the the, the uh, I will return the fathers and the sons. Talk about that with, uh, was that not Micah, uh, Malachi 4, 5, or Malachi 4, I will return the fathers and the sons. Elijah will, will reconnect the fathers and the sons. I believe that's the breach in the church 
that, that will be reunited. You know, those outside the church system and those in the Babylonian church system, not everybody, but in, there's there's people that will be coming out of the Babylon system mm. and, um, and be reunited before the Lord returns. And, you know, I've, I've always wondered what that verse meant. I, I really feel that this is what it means. And it means that the, the breach in the churches, the, 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 the people in the wilderness. Okay, Malachi, where are we? 4-6. Is it 4-6? He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to the parents. That's the uh, New International Version, which kind of sucks. But he will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and, the, let me see, and the hearts of the children to their parents or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. But in the King James Version, it says the fathers, you know, the fathers and the sons. So what's the verse uh, again? Malachi? It's here's, four, here's a King James. Okay, where's 4-6? I cannot read that. Please, right. don't, I can't read that. It's, it's, we need big iPads with big you know, glowing words to hit us. But uh, um, that's the verse. It's four six, I believe. And he will turn the hearts of fathers it's to Trish. their children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a degree of utter destruction. Right, and and I've always, you know, this idea that Elijah precedes Jesus. John the Baptist precedes Jesus, and then John the Baptist diminishes and Jesus increases. You know, that's, I've, I've always, that's always been in my mind. You know, it's always been, I've always wondered about that. And it seems like this time of uncovering all the evil will be an opportunity for the breach of the churches. And we know what it is. We know that a lot of the churches are sold out to the world system, and, you know, we, we are not compatible with that. We understand that. But uh, we always hope that, because I know the hearts of people who are corrupted in that way, and they do want the Lord. You know, they do want, I'm not going to judge them, and you know, I don't want them punished. I just want them yeah. straight, you know, true blue. Like, I just want to just follow the Lord, not follow two different two different directions. You go in two different directions, you, you, you know, it's, 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 it's not going to work. So, you know, I, I believe that, uh, I, yeah, the apocalypse, the unveiling of things, and then this Elijah. And um, my friend, I got a friend who's a real expert He's, in time. We talked about um, a lot of people had the 2018 as a kind of a Daniel thing for the full wrap up uh, based on the book of Daniel. And, and then he had like 2028. And, you know, not that I put any, any faith in dates or anything, but I, ju I did think. Well, the age of Kali, not that that's going to be true either, but the age of Kali winds up in 2025. And a lot of people say that this whole Mayan calendar really winds up in 2025. And then that's three years, three and a half years from 2028. And so it, you know, it's just something, you know, I don't put much stock in all this stuff. It's just something that's interesting to me. Yeah, the Mayan I, calendar I, I talked about a while with. ago was problematic because they had to compare apples and oranges to try to figure out how to line them up. And the 2012 date uh, was accepted by most people, but there is a 500-year spread between mm -hmm. the earliest lineup and the later lineups, which is a few lifetimes. Well, that's a lot. That's a big spread. Yeah. So, so, so uh, you know, I, I to say it that just, it was ever. Yeah, it seems like we're coming into a some kind of a conclusion of something. But, you know, isn't it true, uh, one of the problems I see is people trying to actually make dates and all that. But uh, whatever Jesus, see, to me, in my biblical way of thinking, Jesus is number one, and from there, everything is answerable mm -hmm. to. So unlike other people who say every single word of the Bible is written by God, and I, what I look at is Jesus' teachings are supreme, and then we read downward. That's just my my point of view. And I, you know what? I got in a lot of trouble for having your view, but I I um, have had your view for many years. Jesus is 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 it? You know what I mean? His word goes. And if he says something that may not line up exactly with the Old Testament or whatever, it's like we go with Jesus. He was the corrector. I mean, he came to set things right. You know. Right. So my my point though is that one of the things Jesus talked about was say, when will the end come? Right now, here's Jesus talking. When will the end come? He doesn't give you, you know, March 14th, 1973, or whatever it would be in the, Jew, uh, the Jewish equivalent. He's talking about a season. You're talking about you can feel the season coming. There's this fluidity and unknownness that is part of it. So you can know 
you could feel it's something's going on and it's near or at least nearer, but you're not supposed to know when because right. it's it's not even in stone. Jesus said himself, only the Father knows when the end comes, not even the angels. There's nobody who knows. And because it's not for anybody to know, because there's a whole thing going yeah, on. Yeah, we do know because the kingdom is within us. Luke 17, 21, the kingdom's within us. Uh, he says, don't don't be looking over here for it or over there. It's within you. And so within us, of course, we know everything uh, because we're not disconnected from the Father. But it's not brought to our conscious mind to where we can go out and say, okay, on such and such a date. People have been doing this for years, and that's a good way to stop people from uh, looking into Jesus at all. Just uh, the one thing about Jesus, let me just put it this way, folks. Here's, here's my book. I'll just give you my what I know to be true, okay? And, and of course, I'm bouncing the thing around with my arms. I'm sorry. Uh, the whole solution to the whole problem is Jesus. And when I say Jesus, it's a very multi-layered, multi-dimensional mystery that you can't really understand unless you, once you enter in and start going down that path, if, if you know, if once you, even when you enter in, it's hard to explain. But the solution to everything is Jesus, who equals life, which equals, um, it really equals the totality of everything in a way. It's a, it's a great mystery, and yet it's the simple solution. Praying in Jesus' name, for those who don't believe, maybe you try that. It's, it's, it's a pathway, it's a life, it's a new life, it's a new heart, it's a new mind, it's a direction. And um, the enemy will do anything in its power to stop it or make Jesus look irrelevant or make it look like that was then and this is now or that's some old religion that doesn't matter of Jesus is a myth. None of those things is true because we are we are proof. I am proof. We are proof in our in our in answered prayer. We are proof in things that happen in the world. Pray in Jesus name and it, the world changes. That's the one thing they're afraid of. The fact that people would pray in Jesus' name and then things would change and then they can't control it. And so that's why they're so keen to uh, to eliminate Jesus, Christianity, all that stuff. And when you eliminate Jesus, what happens? There's actually a curse of humanity that we're born into. And there is no magic uh, new age thing that's gonna get us out of it. The only way out of the curse of humanity that is a curse, it's bondage, the only way is Jesus, and yet when people try to explain it in 3D linear terms, they get all they 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 they're not able to understand because they they just think oh it's like an external thing you believe in, and it's not it's a it's a it's a, a lot a lot of you are going through an experience right now this moment you're going through this experience you can't explain, and it's what's happening the Lord's calling you in, the Lord's going to show you the sun the Lord's going to show you everything. But but when you try to explain it to somebody, they're not going to understand. But you're being brought in right now. And I'm saying, yes, if it's Jesus Christ and you're going to pray in Jesus' name, then you go with that and you'll see. But don't expect anyone else to really understand. It's kind of a one-to-one -one thing that happens. But I can tell right now on this broadcast there are people that are being— maybe you you you, you feel like you're, being, you're crazy. Maybe you feel like you're, you're losing it. But the Lord is, it's not, you're not losing it. The Lord's calling you in. And then you'll remember somewhere in your spirit, somewhere in the depth of your being, which is very deep, you'll recognize home, recognize, you know, father. You'll recognize, you know, mother, father, home, uh, other than this. You'll recognize that this is not your final destination, some temporary time clock, tick tock, tick tock, and then that's the end of it. You, 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 uh, you, you'll start to feel these feelings that are really incomprehensible. And, it's, and people who have been close to the Lord have had, you know, experiences. They've been in the wilderness. They've been, you know, maybe they're in nature and they're overwhelmed, and then they have an experience of God. It, it's an experience that causes them to tremble with even with dread. It's just so overpowering, overwhelming. Uh, the Lord, the, the creator, the one who made everything. And you're not separate from I am. We are I am, you know, see? You're not separate from Christ. We are Christ. And then once you start getting, that's John 17 I'm referring to. So you can go to John 17 and read those last verses. And you know what? I've never met uh, Bible teachers in the 501c3 system that could adequately teach those verses. Isn't that something? Because 
that's the mystery. That's the thing we enter into. And um, it's wonderful, and it's the healing. It's the solution. It makes a person able to die. How many of you are ready to die? I don't, I don't want to take up and start preaching here, but how many are ready to die right now? How yeah. many have to accomplish more before you die? Who can die right this minute? Uh, I got no problem. I mean, I, I want to make sure that I do what I should do, so when I do right. go onward, I want to say, oh, oh, darn, you know, I don't want any regrets. But the only thing I think about dying is I'm kind of interested in the process. I mean, I don't want to be, like, set on fire and, you know. But I, one thing I've always prayed is that if I ever have to be made an example of for evil, like they're going to torture me, you know, that I want to go, Lord, I'm not trying to get out of the pain, all right? But mm -hmm. I want to make a good stand. Now, I'll take the pain maybe later, but be with me to get me through it to let them know they did not win. And then, then I'll take the pain, you know, quietly love, somewhere. Good, well done. Well, here's, here's the thing about it. There's a trick that Satan has, and that is, he says, okay, if you renounce Jesus right now, we won't cut your head off. Let's say it's a guillotine situation. Yeah, you know, so, so a, a coward, you know, they, they cower in that last minute, they renounce Jesus. And then as soon as they're off the guillotine, someone comes up and blows their head off with a gun. Yeah. <laughs> so you might as well, it's going to be less painful to just take the guillotine. And the thing you want to do with the guillotine is once your head goes in that basket, keep your eyes shut and it'll be over in a second. Don't, don't be looking around. I know that people, I know some people are curious, well, I'll still be conscious if my head's cut off. Yeah, for a second, maybe. Uh. <laughs> but from what I understand, it's, it's it, you know, nothing new in all these mass killings. I mean, back in the French Revolution, the Jacobins, in the actually after 1790, they they killed. I mean, they've all day long with the guillotine. You know, if you if you if you just looked like you know if you'd worked if you've been a, a third level maid for uh, King Louis or Antoinette, off with their heads. You know, if you said something nice about the old regime, off with their heads. It, you know, if if someone didn't like you or if a woman scorned could report you by that afternoon, you're guillotined. They had just an unquenchable thirst once that thing got started. And from what I understand, uh, you know, from all the rumors, I guess these are urban legends about the guillotines waiting to be brought out, especially in the United States, which the New World Order and the secret societies claim the United States is really their playground. It's their Babylon. It's their it's their kingdom. It's their this is where they, the, the, the ground zero for them besides Israel and Jerusalem. Mm. So it's very interesting how this is all, you know, unfolding. Uh, I can't worry about it. If, if you know, we, we could die any day for any, any number of reasons. I just got, I'm just saying, could you die? I think I, I think I can. I don't want to, but I pray. I almost died from this flu thing that's killed a lot of people. This was back a few years, same kind of flu. And I was really seriously un unable to breathe. And I've, I, I just thought, okay, I've, if you're going to take me, Lord, you know, it, it wasn't bad. I could feel myself slipping. And then I went and got the Bible out of the drawer. The, it was in a hotel up in Alaska, and Trish was visiting with her mother. And I just felt like this, she might come back and I'm dead. So I got the, and I was taken to, and I can't remember the verse exactly in Thessalonians, but it was some verse. And, and the Lord said, this is the beginning of your healing when I saw that verse, it was all part of it. And then step by step after that, remember, there was a slow road back to health from that moment, from that moment where I said, Lord, I'm, if you want to take me, I'm at peace. But then, no, I'm not taking you, yeah. you know, and here's this verse. And then, and by Job, I just walked right out of it. And after, you know, it, it, it persisted about a month of discomfort and coughing and all that stuff. But, it, you know, that wasn't my time. Mm. I think the enemy would have liked it. I, I, I'm no good at, in Alaska in the wintertime. I, every time I've gone there in the wintertime, I am completely uncomfortable. <laughs> it is just too cold. For That's me. the time not to go to Alaska. You know, you go yeah, to Alaska the in the summer, summer, summer and it's pretty. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to drive up there, take that drive up the uh, Alcam. And now they tell me I have to have a passport and I don't have a passport. I got to get, you know, got to get your papers in order. And, um, uh, nature is really cool. When you see nature and you just see God's creation, you know, there's so much good, there's so many good things to, to, to 
to see and to appreciate and, and even um, to the stages of life we have are beautiful things. And I just don't want these people to steal that from us, to steal that joy, to make us feel like any minute now we're going to be rounded up, any minute now we're going to be killed. Uh, we're emergency, emergency. I just can't live like... I, I would like, if, if I just, if I'm being selfish, baby, I'm sorry, but I would like it, just some kind of rest from this, you know, this situation yeah. we're in. I mean, just some kind of, uh, I'm, I'm willing to fight it out all the way, but I'm just, I just wish for some kind of, um, just a, like a little bracket of, of just, yeah, you know, the goodness of God, the, the overwhelming beauty of creation, all those kind of things. Uh, the beauty of uh, uh, of peace. Well, let me let me stop here uh, before we go. I want to just we, we didn't talk about your music and uh, uh, if you're on Spreak, if you're on Spreaker or if you don't know about Spreaker, you could still go there. I mean, you don't have to. As far as I know, you don't have to join or anything. I hit the wrong button here. Let me get to there. Yeah, but um, one of the things that is interesting about Zeph, and if you listen to his podcast, if you haven't, then you do listen to it. You'll get music in there, which is kind of cool. But it's very high quality stuff. It's really tastefully sonically. So, if you don't like the particular genre, which I don't even know how to describe it, well, how would you describe your genre? It's kind of cinematic, and it's kind of alternative, and it's kind of a, uh, electronic. And I, yeah, I, you know, it's. Um... How about does Love Blade something good? I could just. Yeah, that's good. Give, Throw that give on. Give a taste. That's- there's some musicians that, that are good to like that. Dynamic headphones on. I mean, it's it's just you got to listen to it and just close your eyes, and it's like the sonic treat. Some of it's spooky, you know. Some of it is uh, a little bit more, I guess, you want to call it normal. <laughs> I don't know how, but it's, it's fantastic stuff. Well, no, I'm, I'm a composer. I mean, I do do things you say cinematic, things that tell a story, and it could be you know anything. I also like surprises in music where. You know, where you're going along and the unexpected happens. And uh, because I like suspense and I like not knowing exactly what's going to happen. And, uh, you, you know, it's a journey. It's a music is a journey for me. I think the Lord gave it to me to, uh, you know, to, to help me uh, express in sonic terms, you know, some of the things going on here today. I wonder if I could just, while we're talking here, uh, let me see if I could just I'm gonna turn it down. Here it is. Oops. Leave it on in the background. Uh, because uh, I, I love sound, and, and I, I'm more of a producer, fool around type guy rather than a musician. I mean, my, I, I play music because I have to. I'm not hearing you, man. But I'm not proficient at all. In fact, if I can. Let me stop this for a minute. I had talked to you about working on one of my songs because I'm not a drummer, but what I did was I used the Sonic Foundry Acid to create the drums that I heard in my head, and you mm-hmm. actually started fooling around with it. And then I went to the hospital, and we kind of drifted on that. Maybe we can get back on it, but I do Yeah, have no, I, I love the end. What I love about that is the- This is, uh, for those who heard the song many times in my 
my show is like an outro. This is uh, getting the drums. Put a rough mix on there. Cool to have a, a, an actual drummer. And then he did things that were like different than I would have done. Where's my sound? That's not I think James, are those uh, are those my drums there? Or yeah. Drum? Yeah. That sounded pretty good. Now, now that's weird because I thought uh, I need to go back to that mix. Yeah, because at, at some point in the future, there was it's like oh, and you came in a different time, but I mean you were still kind of working with this is a this is not even near finished. It was a rough mix. You were I was kind of like egging you. I'm dying to hear it. I'm dying to hear it. So you sent me this. Yeah, no, no, but I like the fact the drums were here and where they were in the mix, and I yeah. was wondering if I had something to do with it. Yeah, you sounded, did it all. I mean, I sent you the... <laughs> I played the drums. It sounded yeah. familiar, but it sounded pretty good. So. Yeah, yeah I, I sent you the dry the dry hey, tracks, and then you... Now, now I'm in a position to take that mix to another level, so... Yeah. Let's, uh, let's let me get back. That'll be good, and that'll be like uh, something I, I look forward to. I'm going to... Yeah, I got a couple other songs too that I've did, which I which I will spring on you uh, <laughs> along the way. Gonna keep me busy, huh? Yeah, because my, my whole, I mean, frankly, my whole fantasy, you know, my my whole musical life was to team up with somebody. Because when you have people, you know, I got this thing in my head, right? I was in a band in the, in the late seventies, right? And I would come in with my song, and I had the drums figured out. And we started to play it, and the drummer played something completely different. And I loved it. I'm like, yo, that's fantastic, you know, because, you know, I like that interplay. So that's kind of a personal thing I've been waiting for. But well, anyway, other I'll, I'll things stop I'd like this, to do. We probably should wrap it up because I have to prepare for the live show tonight, too. Okay. And I enjoy talking with you, and we could talk yeah, for nice. another four hours probably. <laughs> hey, and we'll do it again. So, you know. Yeah, I, I, I look forward to it. But yeah, it's. Uh... It, we're, it's so, so funny. We're on parallel journeys in a way, from completely different uh, backgrounds and things, but we're on the same. And you're 16 years, and I guess or going into your 16th year, I'm going into my. I don't even want to count anymore, but I have. I think. Well, 16 this, in so, May, I think. Or this March. is my 16th yeah, year now, yeah. and uh, it's been. I just can't believe it went by so fast. Yeah. You know? Well, it's to me. Time is both fast and long because it's like I look back way back and it feels like yesterday and it feels like another lifetime at the same time. So, but anyway, people who let me go back to this. So, uh, people who uh, can you you can go to Spreaker and have access to both SoundCloud. Things. SoundCloud it has wave files and those are really good quality. Okay, well I got the SoundCloud here. No, not not that, that one. It's uh it's uh. What's the name of that one, Trish? It's SoundCloud. It's um, that's the podcast. It's uh, there's Report? a music. There's a music. Uh, SoundCloud. It's dot com a, forward slash Zef Daniel. Okay, forward slash Zef Daniel. All right. On SoundCloud, will get you to the music, and then that that has all kinds of experimental stuff, and just you know, like this three play thing was something that I worked on with a producer. That's really. Uh, a very accomplished guy, and we worked on a, in the studio, and it was just really just interesting, different, you know, different. Uh, it's a very free site, and there's some very interesting music there. So I would suggest this one and subscribe to this one because you get a 48K, 24-bit wave file that you can download if you fancy it. And you can convert it to MP3 or do whatever you want with it. But those are almost very close to being a studio master. 
And so there's good, like you say, good quality. And then there's the Love Blade we looked at, and that's much higher fidelity than on. Um, and there's you okay. know, there's a bunch of, uh, you know, and 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 there's other musical projects I've been involved in out there. Like there's one called Dubiverse, which is um, some really out there. I've got some, you know, my history was I was really wild earlier on in my life <laughs> in music. And uh, so some people like those old days where I was, I would do anything, you know, just like whatever was happening, I just went with it. And so there's um, there's one that Trish sings on called Death Threat that uh, my wife Trish, and she does a fantastic job. One do like an 80s pop kind of feel. It's about people that expose the truth and they get death threats. Concerned, which you know, you put the truth out there, and yep, you could get a death threat. So, there's all kinds of variety. That's, yeah, that's why it's hard to categorize. I like blues and rock, and you know, uh, funk and dance, and you know, uh, cinematic. And I love Hans Zimmer, the composer, you know, who does all the big time movies. And uh, Terrors at One, that's a cinematic track that's actually. Uh, about terrorism, but it's a it's something that you could find in a movie, you know, that would be the typical movie soundtrack and very powerful at, at times with, you know, big, big uh, uh, unexpected events that happen. A Broken Mirror is about um, anyone who is satanically, ritually abused, anyone who's been traumatized by sexual abuse uh, and then wants it. It's, it's really playing on the idea that you've been hurt. And then the very thing that hurts you, you want again, but you don't want it, but you're fighting it, but you do want it. And it's a very complicated situation, and I try to address that in that song. Mm -hmm. And then the fun one right there, that's uh, The Lonely Bull. That was uh, 1962. There was uh, Herb Alpert and the yep. Tijuana Brass, and I used to be a surfer, you know, and this was like in the Endless Summer soundtrack, and then I did my own electronic version, kind of um, remixed it, really, using their melody, and, and I... You know, it was kind of a fun, fun instrumental track. Because if I was in, if I was the next one down there, time. fun. That goes back to when I was like 18. I was being gang stalked, and uh, this girl was pretending to be my girlfriend, and she was really just trying to turn me over to Satan. And it, it was like, uh, you know, and and, and 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 I wound up at the asylum. And when I got out, I tracked her down. No, I didn't kill her. I tracked her down. But anyway, some fun things. <laughs> As no, we go I mean, to psychotronic things. killers, yeah. but uh, yeah, I mean, to me, music's my favorite thing. But it seems, I guess, the only thing I haven't done. In fact, uh, to further prove that I'm really going to get back into it, I actually bought a new set of bass strings and guitar strings. What kind you got? The DR uh, Red Devils. Nice. I never tried these because you know, last time I bought strings. Let, let's talk about your bass for a minute. Uh, James has an unbelievable Ricky. He's got a Rickenbacker bass, stereo bass, which is just the most coveted thing, has the best sound for recording, cuts right through. That was the original Getty Lee bass. Right. It's just awesome. And I and I know that because I worked on his track, on that uh, track, and it's just, it's a beautiful, I, I want one of these. Well, I don't really, I've got a... Yeah. I'm, my, you know, I'm trying to get my Fender thing uh, up that's, and running. That's how it is. I mean, I have actual Beautiful pictures. Place. Yeah. I have actual pictures somewhere, but I don't know where it is. I wasn't, you know, ready for that. But uh, what I, what I would, I really like to do is music, and it throughout my whole life. This is the one thing I regret. I'm 60, and young guy. Since I was, <laughs> since I was, uh, was it 79? We actually went into a studio with demo, right, and made made songs. I was in. And when I went on my own and I did stuff, when I did that ancient one, right, when I put an ancient one and I heard the, I was looking for the, uh, the um, Indian singers, American Indians, Native Americans, mm -hmm. and it took me a year trying to find them. And finally I said to God, I said, I can't, I, I've talked to them, I went to places, drum meetings, and. Those are great. Those samples you had are fantastic. And, and I said to God, I said, I, I give up. And I picked up a magazine right there and opened it up, and there was a, a disc to go along with my software with Native American stuff. And when I dropped it in, it was perfect. perfect. No perfect. timing changes, no no key changes. And I, I started weeping. I just first heard that first, hey, yeah, and I just wept like a baby. 
And I went like, oh, God, this is what I want to do. And here I am. How many years later? That was in 2000. No, it was in. So Isn't wonder, it wonderful wonder how your music stirs your emotions and things like that? Uh, it's wonderful to be uh, to have tears because it's uh, it's it's real. It's it's something that's uh, a, a lot of the music that that I, I'll hear a track and and sometimes the track will trigger me crying and I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I'd rather have those tears and have that you know moment of sometimes tears are half regret and half elation, you know, yeah. but uh, it's, it's a, it's a great thing. And, and, and music does, it's all about emotions. You know, it's all about that. Well, Hey, it's been great being here. Thank you uh, very much for yeah, uh, inviting and me. People can go to uh, Zeph report on uh, Facebook. And if you want to contact Zeph, you could post or send a message there or what have you. And then of course we talked about listening to his uh, podcast. So that's the best way to do that. And if you're up at like uh, three and four in the morning, that's when he comes out and does his podcast. <laughs> He's the, uh, the late night guy. So uh, for I'm me, when actually... I go to work, most of the time I'm already it's already done or close to it. I'll tune in at the last minute, few minutes for live, but then I'll get to listen to it while I'm driving. So I appreciate what you're doing, and uh, I appreciate you now as a, as, as kind of like a new friend. So I'm looking forward to uh, the future. I'll come out and well, visit you're, sometime. The, you're my little brother now. i got to look out for you. <laughs> <laughs> I could use it. So I appreciate uh, the you, time. You got and, it, man. Uh, it's fun. It's say, really fun uh, today. My best to you and Trish, and we Thank will uh, we'll talk. Yes. So take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.